Hello friends, today we are going to discuss a variant of the previous program that is the Fibonacci series. We are going to print the nth term of the Fibonacci series today in this class. So let us get started with the program as I have written on the board. Uh, you can see the question. It is uh, WAP in C. Write a program in C to print the nth term of the Fibonacci series. So that means if the, uh, if the Fibonacci series goes like this, as you know, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, etc. So this is the first term, this is the second term, this is the third term, this is the fourth term, this is the fifth term and so on. So if any user wants the third term to be printed, so this third term is 1, so the 1 should be the output of the program. If any user wants the fifth term to be printed, the output of the program should always return how much that is 3 fifth term is 3 so the output should become 3 so our objective in this program is to print the nth term of the Fibonacci series not the whole series uh, as a whole as we have uh, done in the previous program but in this program we are going to print a single number a single term of uh, the Fibonacci series uh, whichever the user wants to print. So let's get started uh, with the program. So as I have explained uh, all of these above, hash include stdr.h, uh, no need to explain this further. Then we go to the main portion of the program that is int main and then comes the opening brace. Then we declare all the variables which are necessary for the program. That is, uh, we are taking how many variables? One, two, three, four, five variables are needed. That is, one for the F1 variable, that is the first term of the Fibonacci series, second term of the Fibonacci series, F2, third term of the Fibonacci series, F3. Number n is the number of terms, that is the nth term which is to be printed, uh, which is input by the user. The user wants, suppose, the third term to be printed, so this n will become. 3. So this uh, n uh, goes for that nth term of the sequence which is to be printed. So this n variable is taken for that and this i variable as you know that is uh, this i variable is the iteration variable or the loop variable. So now comes the next line that is the input line uh, which term to print. The user gives the input as scan a person d a person n then we are going through the following checking sequence as we have done in the previous program that is if n less than equal to 0 printf invalid input that is a negative uh, term a negative term cannot be printed say about uh, if anybody wants the minus second term to be printed so minus second uh, does not make any sense so we are going to print invalid input in that case or someone wants the minus first term minus second term minus third term and so on if one goes uh, in the negative side so there will be no desired output so we go for this uh, invalid input printf uh, output then there comes the two boundary situations that is we have discussed that the first two values of the Fibonacci series are called the boundary values or the base values or the base criteria or the boundary criteria. So this 0 and 1 in the first uh, in the first two places are the base values. So we have to deal with these two numbers in an easy manner as we have dealt with uh, here in this program as we have dealt in the previous program as well that is else if n is equal to if n is equal to is equal to 1 then we will print f percent uh, new line percent d f1 see we have initialized the value of f1 to be 0 that is this 0 and we have initialized the value of f2 in the first instance as 1 that is this 1 so if anybody wants the first term to be printed so it will straight away print the value of f1 that is f1 is 0 so 0 will be printed in this case so friends in the next case that is the next boundary value value in the case that is the second term of the sequence else if n is equal to is equal to 2 if the second term is to be printed by the program it, uh, if the second term is required by the user then we are going to straight away print uh, percent d f2 that is f2 contains the value of 1 so this 1 gets printed so we have dealt with the negative uh, invalid situations and the boundary values so that uh, uh, takes us to the remaining section of the program that is the all other cases apart from those uh, three situations which, which we have studied previously 
now we are going to deal with the other situations that is the other terms of the series so there comes the iterative logic or the role of the for loop and uh, that will be uh, written in a separate block separate else block and that is the last portion of the if else if ladder and this else contains a brace opening brace under which we are going to declare our loop uh, control statement that is for i is equal to 3 suppose i is equal to 3 why this i is equal to 3 there must be some question in your minds friends i is equal to 3 means that uh, if we are taking like this this value to be the first number 0 second number is 1 third number is this one not this one fourth number is this two fifth number is this three sixth number is this five seventh number is this eight and, and so on so <clears throat> in this case these two cases have been dealt with as the boundary situations or the boundary values and then the iterative logic comes into play or the recurrence relation holds good as we have discussed in a previous class we have discussed the recurrence relations of the recurrence relation of the fibonacci series and uh, this term becomes the third term of the iterative sequence and this iterative sequence then starts from the value 3 so we have for the sake of simplicity taken the value of the iteration variable as 3 uh, in the initial section so we have initialized this i value to 3 then we have done a checking part that is the condition uh, that is the condition part that is i less than equal to n and i plus plus is the modification part of the increment part as uh, in this program so first the line in the for loop is nothing but we have to determine the sum of the previous two terms to get the third term that is if we want to uh, calculate f3 we have to add up the first two previous two terms that is f1 and f2 suppose if we want to print the third value then we have to print the first and the second values the first and the second values is this is the first value this is the first value rather zero this is the second value that is one so the zero plus one gives you one and this one becomes the third value as you see the third number is one and we as, if as we go one step ahead and further then we move on these uh, terms from uh, f1 to f2 f2 to f3 and so on and so forth by updating the values in this manner as we have discussed in the previous program so this logic is quite similar to the previous program that is f1 is equal to f2 f1 is updated to f2 f2 is updated to f3 then after all the iterative operations are done with then we come out of the for loop sequence and then come to the next line in the else block that is printf percent d f3 so whatever will be printed is a single value which is to be printed and we our objective in this program is to play print the nth term of the Fibonacci series not the entire series so what is the difference between this program and the previous program is that in the previous program we have printed the entire series so this printf this printf statement this printf line or the print this printf expression statement comes inside the loop so if it inside if it is inside the loop then the printf statements occurs iteratively in a sequence that is one after the other as you can print uh, as you need to print uh, the entire sequence or a definite part of the Fibonacci sequence but in this case if you want to enter if you want to print the only the nth term of the Fibonacci series you just come out of the for loop so that no multiple numbers will be printed in the program as output so we have taken this printf statement outside the for loop and then in the last line of the else block we have written printf percent d whatever is the value of f3 then the else portion gets finished finished and after that we are left with only one line that is the return zero as you know so there is no place we have paucity of space in this board so let us write this over here so return zero will be the next line and then the main sections main sections closing brace so this ends the program and let us just take a simple uh, dry run let us just go through a dry run procedure say uh, the user wants the fourth value to be printed say suppose the user want the fourth value to be printed so a user supplies n is equal to four in that case the program control 
starts from here, f1 is equal to f, f, uh, f1 is equal to 0, f2 is equal to 1, f3 not initialized, n is 4. So, this becomes 0, this becomes 1, this becomes question mark, this is 4 and this i variable is also not assigned at the beginning. So, now come to the second line, user gives n is equal to 4 as we have written here. Then we go through this checking if n less than 0 and this printf invalid input is not coming into play as uh, we see that n is 4 which is not clearly less than 0. It is not a negative number. It is a valid positive number. It is a finite number in the, in the integer in the set of integers. So this 4 is not less than 0. So this line is not going to be executed. Then comes the comes to the next line that is if else is else if n is equal to is equal to one then we are going to print f one but our n value is four not equal to one so this line will also not be executed. Then comes the second line. Then comes the third line rather in this if else if ladder sequence. Then it says if n is equal to is equal to two then we are going to print f two. So f two is one. It is never going to print it because our objective is to print the fourth value. So we come to the remainder section of the uh, if else if ladder. So this <coughs> we enter this else block. Our loop starts with the i value three. i is initialized to three. So let us take a dry run of that. i is equal to three. Now, f1 is equal to 0, f2 is clearly 1, n is equal to 4. So, our checking will be 3 is 3 less than equal to 4. Yes, the condition holds, this condition holds. We enter the for loop, we calculate f3 as is written in the program as f3 is equal to f1 plus f2, f1 has a value of 0, f2 has a value of 1. Now, we are going to put some values in the end so that we can run the program on the board itself because before you just go on to run the program or execute the program on the computer system. So, let us take uh, some uh, value for a sample value of n is equal to 4. Suppose the user gives the value of n is equal to 4, that is the objective of the user is to print the fourth value of the sequence. So, it is uh, n is definitely not less than 0, so this invalid input will not be printed. N, n is not equal to 1, so this f1 will not going to be printed. Else if n is equal to is equal to 2, f2 will not be printed because n is not equal to 2. Then we come to the remainder section of the if else if ladder, that is this else block. Now we enter this else block and see that for i is equal to 3, so we will start our i value from Three and check whether this 3 is less than or equal to n. So, see i is 3 which is clearly less than or equal to 4 that is the uh, that is our n value. So, we enter this for loop. The first line goes like this f3 is equal to f1 plus f2. So, f3 will be calculated in this manner 0 plus 1 because this is the value of the current f1. This is the value of current f2. So, that gives 1. So, f3 now is assigned a value of 1. So, we have got this F3 value now and then our next objective is to uh, update the values of the F1 and F2 so that we can advance in the sequence of the program. We can just go ahead and print the and go ahead and go to the desired result or the desired output. So, this F1 becomes F2. See, this is interesting. This is the first F1. This is the second Suppose this, I write it in a fresh way, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, like this. So, this is the F1 previously, this is the F2 previously, this is the determined F3 value at this point, at the first iteration of this uh, for loop, that is, this is the F3. Now, what is our objective? We have to go to the 1, 2, 3, 4. So, we need to print this number 2. This 2 should be printed as the output. Our objective is to print the fourth value of the Fibonacci sequence, which is nothing but 2. So, this F1 should be advanced one stage, F2 should be advanced by one stage and F3 will similarly go one step ahead. So, we have to make some necessary changes in order to advance with the program. Like this, this F2 will become the new F1, this F3 will become, will become the new F2 as we have written here. See this new value of F1 is the previous value, value of F2, the new value of F2 is the previous value of F3. So, like this, so now F1 is 1, F3 is also 1. Now, our sequence 
says that this should be our F3. So F3 should be uh, calculated by adding up this F1 and F2. See, let's uh, come to the next iteration if it comes inside the loop. Uh, let us see. Uh, for i is equal to 3, then i plus plus is the incremental portion. So i gets incremented to i is equal to 4 from 3. And this 4 is definitely, i value 4 is definitely less than equal to 4. So this condition again holds. We enter the loop. F3 is then again calculated in the similar fashion as, as has been done uh, in the previous iteration. That is F3 is equal to F1 plus F2. But the values have been updated. F1 is now 1. F2 is now 1. So this gives F, F3 to be 2. Then we again update the F1 and F2 like the previous case like the previous iteration f1 becomes what now f1 becomes this f2 that is this is the new f1 this is the new f2 so f1 becomes now 1 f2 becomes now 2 and we will go one step ahead see whether we can go or we whether we need to go say now this has been updated now the value of f1 is uh, which one this f1 is now 1 this f2 has now become 2 so now we come to the loop once again let us see whether we can enter the loop i plus plus means i is equal to 5 5 is clearly not less than equal to 4 so this condition so this condition doesn't hold good so this condition doesn't hold good so we just come out of the loop we don't enter the loop come out of the loop and then the program control goes to this printf statement whatever is in the f3 now will be printed as an output so let us see what is the last value of f3 with us so last value of f3 is see this the last value of f3 is 2 so we will our program's output will become will become nothing but 2 the output output of the program will be Two and let us see whether it uh, goes on to tally or goes on in conformity with uh, what we have expected as the desired output. See, that is the fourth term of the Fibonacci sequence. Zero, one. That is the first term, second term, third term, fourth term. So fourth term is two. Our output is also two. So definitely the program is correct and it will run on your computer system. Uh, thank you for. Uh, uh, participating with me in this program explanation part and if you have any doubts or queries regarding this program you can put your uh, doubts or queries in the comment section below so that I can address your queries. Thanks.